Hey friends, welcome back. This is Ashley with Uncommon Roots Homestead. And today I wanna to talk about why we have to thin our vegetables and my least favorite thing about gardening. Let's do it. Alright, so you may have noticed that I am at our current house today. I'm not over in the Potager Garden. Um, it's just been a long week. We're a little bit tired and we spent our day today with some friends. And so instead of going to the land with Kevin this evening, I'm staying here. We put the kids down to bed early and I want to talk about my old gardening space. And I want to talk about what happens when you kind of neglect a space. So let me show you what I'm working with. All right, this is my existing garden. As you can see, it has very much gone to seed. This is pretty much my winter garden, um, living in a serious stage of neglect. We also did have four, this has been um, removed, I actually moved that bed over to the Potager Garden, um, but I have four of these six by three foot beds. I had this cattle panel for some of my climbers. I had tomatoes up against this trellis. Um, we had ginger and babs back there. So you can see it is a pretty rough space right now. It has been neglected all winter. Um, you can see the dog was getting in, so we had like makeshift tried to close that gap. Um, some things are starting to come back. I've got some strawberries coming back and things like that. But for the most part, this space has just been totally neglected. So I think when I think about like why my garden has been so neglected here at the house, um, a big part of that is that we have been so focused on building our farm over um, on our land and we've been really putting a lot of our energy into building the potage garden over there and to preparing all of the space for the animals that we have there and we just haven't really spent as much time here and one of our priorities now that we're kind of getting into the season and everything is already established right like the potage garden is just about done all of the animals have the proper structures like everything is kind of set where we need it to go um what we want to do this summer in kind of our spare time, so to speak, while we're still living at this property is clean up this space, get it into a position that it is um, worthy of being handed over to the new owners. Um, and honestly, just create some kind of function out of this area that we don't really need as much anymore, right? Like I don't, I don't need to garden in two gardens. This is actually just the back portion of my garden here. Um, up in the front, if you've seen some of our other videos, I've actually toured this before, but we have a um, four by eight garden bed up in the front. We have two peach trees, a cherry tree, grapes, um, and then the back of our landscaping bed is also like a six by six foot bed-ish. Um, and we, we uh, trellised beans up against the house as well. So I have a lot of garden space here. And I don't need all of this space. I'm gonna be planting everything that we need over in the Potter, Porter Shade. Portage, potage garden um and so what i want to do with this space is i uh, clean out this bed and plant some you know some of the like veggies that i and the annuals that i want to you know just come out from the kitchen and grab really quickly so i'll probably throw some herbs in there things like that um maybe a cherry tomato plant like something that the kids will snack on even though we'll have all of those things over in the potage garden as well it's just easier to grab them here right um because we don't live there yet even though we spend a lot of time there and we will be there harvesting and taking care of the garden every day sometimes it's easier to run out your door and grab something especially when it comes to herbs so that's the plan and with the rest of these beds we're actually going to clear these all out move the bed infrastructure over to the land and then we're going to remulch this area and put some kind of like a place or something like that here so that it kind of is a little bit more, more dual purpose i also just realized as i stood up that i totally sat in water which is really fun um but I wanna talk about what happened here because I know I'm not alone. I know that I'm not the only gardener that has some kind of, like, that has a garden that looks like this. And it's not just that I let it go to seed, right? Like this is what it looks like going to seed. I actually could harvest this and 
Um, this is kohlrabi. Um, and kohlrabi is a brassica. So it's in the same family as like cauliflower and broccoli. I actually could harvest these before they've opened and saute them and cook them like broccolini. That was kind of my plan. And you can see how many of these have already like flowered and opened up. So, um, obviously that didn't happen. I got a little bit of like pest damage and I'm seeing, I do, I mean, I do have a number that haven't opened up that I could probably take, but, um, how, why did it get this way? Right. I'm, <laughs> I, at least to some extent know what I'm doing and still let my garden turn into this. And what happens when this space, the reason it's gone so crazy is because I didn't harvest any of this because I was waiting for these to bulb and they never bulbed. And the reason that they never bulbed is because I did not thin them. So when you plant root vegetables or really like really anything, but when you're planting things that don't take a ton of room, um, and maybe that germinate slowly, or you're planting in a season that has a hard time with germination, like these were all planted in the fall. Um, often the kind of rule of thumb or like generally what you do is you plant really densely and then you thin out. Well, this is a result. I'll turn you. This is a result of planting densely and not thinning out. So what happens is that instead of, you know, I have such a problem with thinning because I'm like, ah, I don't, it's food. Like I don't wanna like kill that food. But what happens is I actually got so much less food out of this space as I could have. Um, because I only harvested like what, one kohlrabi. Um, just so much of it went to complete waste because I didn't give it the space that it needed to actually develop into something that would be desirable for us to eat. So the same thing happened with my carrots and I think carrots are a really good example of this. So I'm gonna show you kind of what that looks like when I try to pull a couple carrots. But even if I go down here to like look at this um, kohlrabi, which is interesting, like these are all, um, these kohlrabi is in the same family as like Brussels sprouts. And it's always interesting to me to see how things like grow so similarly. But you can see that this, I'll turn you down, that this plant like never really developed that strong shape. Like I could harvest that and probably eat some of it, but do you see why? Look at, look at how many are in there. Just so densely planted that I never thinned. It's really a shame. Um, but let me show you what happened to the carrot. All right, so let me get down here. So when it comes to carrots, um, carrots need more space than you might think. They need a good inch or two to really develop that strong root. So um, you can see, here's a good example right here. I did not thin these out. These three that I'm holding on to really all should have been, they should have all been one. Like I should have thinned to one. Let me pull all three and I'll show you what happens. So maybe sometimes carrots want to give you a hard time. Okay, so these were all super close together and you see what I what I ended up with? Instead of, you know, these should be pretty large carrots. Instead, I have this little like super, um, super deformed guy. I have this one that grew really long, just trying to find his space. And then this guy who kind of like took over the, <laughs> took over the spot and got a little bit bigger. But do you see how like, instead of thinning to one and getting one really good sized carrot, now I have three little measly carrots that don't even equal one good sized carrot. And so had I not, like had I not done that and had I gone through and thinned these out, I would have a lot more food at this point. So right now, a lot of you are planting things like carrots. <laughs> you're, you're planting your brassicas and your carrots and your root vegetables in the ground. As those germinate, resist the urge to let them grow, thin them out. It is so worth it. I don't know how many years I'm going to sit here with these like measly carrots before I just take my own advice and thin them out so I can get some good carrots. What you wanna do is give each carrot about like, my rule of thumb is like two inches all the way around. And that's a good amount of like root space for that carrot to get pretty big. Obviously, depends on what kind of carrot you're growing, right? If you're growing a giant variety um, or something like that, you're gonna wanna give it more space, obviously. Um, but if you're dr growing like a standard um, storage carrot, about two to three inches around it the entire way is enough space. Um, and still, you can plant densely, just thin them out as they start to grow. And like, it's not that hard. Then you won't end up with this mess.
what a waste of food. Luckily, we have animals. We're gonna be able to give it to them. It's not actually going to waste, but it could have provided more value and sustenance to our family. And that's our end goal here, right? So do as I say, not as I do. All right, so I am back in the house. I grabbed some seed starting containers and I'm gonna take you upstairs and show you what all the seedlings look like and do what I absolutely despise. And I don't know why I put myself in this situation. I hate potting up. I don't like it at all. Why I've not just invested in quality, larger containers to start all my seeds in beats me. Next year, I'm doing that because Also, before I go upstairs and do that, we just got our Azure standard order and um, I just can't resist a plant. I don't know if I'm alone in that, but like if I go to the store, I could go to Kroger or like Walmart, like I don't, I don't care where it is, but if I walk in somewhere or am I ordering from somewhere and they have plants, it's just like my weakness. <laughs> I can't not buy them. But anyways, um, so of course, just put my got my order from Azure Standard and they had some live starts, so I couldn't help myself. I grabbed some red uh, or auric spinach I'm pretty excited about. I grabbed some Napa cabbage. I grabbed some broccoli and some cauliflower because my brassica starts just didn't really take off. I'm late, uh, we'll see what happens. Um, it's not great in our climate to do that late. And then I also grabbed some thyme and some sage. So I am very excited. And they're all a little bit small when you order online, mm, but they're gonna do wonderful. All right, so I am up in our bonus room, which is doubling as my seed starting area. I just noticed this little guy's not looking so hot. They're a little dry. i add some water. I'll start real quick. Look at how nice these tomatoes look. They're so nice and strong. They look great. I'm also very proud of this. I did not think that I would get anything. And this is my ginger. Not only is it growing, but a ton of it is. So I actually need to um, transfer that out and separate it all, and I'll do that shortly. Um, and then I've got some, a ton of lavender here and some eucalyptus. These are the brassicas that just didn't really take off. And then I've got my kind of reject tomatoes up here. You can see they've been a little neglected. I gave them some water, but these are all the extra tomatoes after I potted up the ones that I'm planning to keep. And then I have all my peppers. That's what I'm gonna be potting up today. I need to separate them out and pot them up. And then I've got some other things that I've already separated out here. These are my artichokes, um, a ton of lavender. I've got some nasturtiums that just really wanna be in the ground back there. But that's what I've got going on up here. So, like I said, next time I will not, I don't know. I mean, this is like my fourth year, third year starting seeds. Um, in the third year doing it this way, and I just don't know why. Um, so now I'm gonna have to pot up into these containers. Um, these are just like really flimsy one, it was, ones. It was all I could get a hold of today. I, didn't, I ran out of like larger containers to pot up to. Um, it's just a mess. So I'm gonna use these. I'll use them as long as I can. Um, and then invest in like some sturdier ones and just start out at this size. So like you might be wondering like, why do so many seed starting sets like start so little, whatever. Um, from what I can find, and I've talked to a couple other friends and like, there's not like a clear, oh, this is why you should always start small and then pot them up. Um, it really is kind of a preference thing and people who want to start a large quantity of things um, and, like want to be able to start the seeds without using as much like soil and things like that. Um, some people sell them smaller um, and so they start them small and then they actually don't have to pot them up. And there's just a lot of different reasons. I guess depending on your climate, like you could be in a climate where you could start your seeds and just put them directly in the ground even when they're like young seedlings. Um, here where we are, everything gets a little bit bigger. They need to be in, they don't need to be in cells quite this big. Um, but they need to be in at least like the two inch cells, not the, um, I think I have, these are in one inch cells right now. 
So they need to be in more space in order to grow for the six to eight weeks that they grow inside here. So I'm going to pot up some peppers. I don't feel like it, but I need to do it. Um, and then I will this week start hardening these off. I am a week and a half from my last frost date. My 10 day forecast looked really good. I'm gonna start hardening these off. And then my goal is to get all of them in the ground in the next couple of weeks. So we're in the home stretch. So not sure if you could tell, but I just spilled water everywhere. Perks of gardening upstairs. <laughs> Okay, so I started getting into that and realized I just don't have enough containers and I'm they're not quite at the size that I want to pot them up yet. Um, I, should, I should thin them out. Um, I'm going to go grab some scissors and do that. So the way that I like to thin um, peppers, if I know, or really anything, if I know that I don't need to split it, um, like I started the number of peppers that I wanted to have in each cell, like, for, like the number of cells or the number of plants that I wanted. Um, and so if I had three germinate in one cell, I don't need three plants from that cell. I just need one. So what I'll do instead of pulling them out, I'll just take some scissors and I will just, I'll just clip whatever the weakest ones look like just to kill them. Um, so I don't disturb the roots at all. I just let the one strongest one remain and take over the entire cell. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then I'm gonna give these another week and then I'm gonna pop them up. Um, I just started getting into it and they're really f fragile. They're really young. Peppers take a long time to grow. In fact, most of the peppers I put in my garden last year um, weren't that much bigger than these are. Um, so I'm just gonna give it a little bit more time. I didn't have a great like plan of action. I only had 18 cells and I you know, have 18 banana pepper peppers. So um, it was, I was gonna have to like choose which ones I wanna do. And so I think I just wanna have a better plan of action and start there instead. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause and come back to that. Also, I wanted to note um, before I sign off, I've gotten this question before. Um, a couple people noticed in my last video that I was starting seeds that I was using miracle Grow potting mix, um, the organic seed starting mix. Um, I don't love using miracle Grow products. Um, Monsanto, who owns miracle Grow, um, doesn't make decisions as an organization the same way that we value in, in a sustainable manner and things like that. Um, but I am a firm believer in using what you have access to and using what we have. Someone gave us this potting soil. Um, and so I'm not going to just not use it. I think that is even more wasteful. Um, so just a note, no, I don't purchase miracle Grow usually. Um, this isn't the one that I would necessarily choose, but um, it does work. And so use what you have access to. The goal is to be as sustainable as possible and make sustainable decisions. And I think as long as we're all pursuing that, you know, um, it's not gonna be perfect 100% of the time, right? It's not like zero to 60 and all of a sudden everything that we do or consume or have access to is gonna be, you know, cultivated in a way that we agree with. Sometimes there are, you know, decisions that we have to make out of necessity or out of, um, you know, usefulness and not wastefulness. It would be really wasteful for me to like, what, throw, throw these away. Um, that doesn't further any cause either. So that's why I'm using the miracle Grow this year, um, because I have access to it, but, um, I appreciate you guys looking out. And I think that the more we can educate each other, the better. So until next time, thank you.